The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. I'm the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for The Whistler, rated by Independent Research, the most popular West Coast radio program. And remember, let every traffic signal remind you, with new signal gasoline, you do go farther than ever. Look for the familiar big yellow and black circle sign that identifies those popular signal service stations throughout the West from Canada to Mexico. And now, the Whistler's strange story, Stranger in the House. Helen decided she might as well be honest with herself. The suspense was getting her down. It had been six years since her brother Ted had left for the Orient on that government mission just before Pearl Harbor. And he was still out there, somewhere between Manila and Shanghai, alive or dead. Yes, it had come to the point now where Helen was wishing for any kind of a message, even one telling her Ted was dead. At least it would end the waiting. At least it would be better than not knowing at all. George, please. I don't want to talk about it anymore. He's been on my mind for so long now, I wish I could forget about him for a while. Oh, I'm rather surprised to hear you say that, Helen. Oh, I, I know it sounds terrible, but... George, it's been six years now. Six years of waiting, not knowing. I know, I Helen. can't stand it much longer, George. He's my only brother, don't you understand? Six years of silence. If, if they'd only tell us something... But you must realize there are thousands of women like you, dear. Just one of those terrible things about a war, that's all. Well, let's just wait, then. Let's not talk about him anymore. But I'm your lawyer, Helen. There's some things we've got to talk about. All right. Go on, George. Now, it's been six years. If we haven't heard from him by next year at this time, he'll be declared legally dead. What does that mean? Well, there's a reversion clause in your father's will, Helen. It means if Ted dies before you do, his share of the estate reverts to you. Why must you always throw that will in my face, George? Why must it always come around to money? Every time we talk about Ted, it's the same thing. I don't care about the money. But we... All I care about is having him back, alive and well. Now, please go, George. If it doesn't have to be settled till next year, let's not talk about it till then. All right, Ellen. Uh, George. Yes, Ellen? I'm sorry I blew up. I'm... I guess I'm just not myself. Sure, Helen. I understand. <laughs> Yes, Helen, the suspense is beginning to tell on you, isn't it? Six years of it. And just a few letters from Ted's your brother early in 1941, telling you of his arrival in Manila, then silence. No way you could get in touch with him, nothing you could do but wait. And you're still waiting, still rushing out to meet the postman, hoping each day will be the big one. George is more tactful now about the will. He doesn't mention it anymore, and you're very grateful. And then at long last, the suspense is ended. It's not the postman. It's Rhoda, your maid, coming into your bedroom one morning with a cablegram. When did it come, Rhoda? Just this minute, miss. A messenger brought it to the door. Arriving September 1st, Seattle, steamer President Jefferson. Love, Ted. At last. Oh, Miss Helen, your brother. At last. Yes. <gasps> Yes, Rhoda. At last. Pardon me. That's all right. I beg your pardon. Pardon me. 
Oh, pardon me. Oh, Stuart, Stuart. Uh, yes, miss? I'm looking for Mr. Ted Van Norton. Where is his cabin, please? Just a minute, please. Uh, Van, 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 uh, Van Norton, stateroom 3C, third deck. Thank you. Oh, hello. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I must have the wrong stateroom. I'm looking for my brother, Ted Van Norton. What's the matter, Helen? Don't you recognize me? Well, who are you? Well, this isn't much of a homecoming after six years. Maybe I'd better introduce myself. The name is Theodore Van Norton, remember? Oh, there, there must be some mistake. Why, Helen. Helen, darling, you're joking, aren't you? Who are you? Well, I've already told you I'm your brother, Ted. You're not my brother. You're... You're an imposter. With the prologue of Stranger in the House, the Signal Oil Company brings you another curious tale by The Whistler. This Labor Day weekend, was part of your driving fun spoiled by the way other cars left you behind on the getaway or climbed ahead of you on hills? Well, don't give up. Cheer up. There's probably lots of pep and performance left in your motor that you're not getting out of it. That's why tonight, for the benefit of you drivers who may not yet have tried Signal's great new gasoline, I want to pass along the good news about this new super fuel that's engineered especially to put the fun back into driving. You see, science actually rearranged the atoms in gasoline molecules to put amazing power into new Signal gasoline. Power that gives you quicker starting, faster pickup, and quieter, higher anti-knock. Ah, but even that's only half the story. For in New Signal, there's an extra bonus of extra mileage. Well, after all, it stands to reason that some power that helps your motor perform so much more efficiently also helps you go farther than ever with New Signal gasoline. And that's why Signal says, look to your speedometer for the best proof of gasoline quality. It takes extra quality to go farther. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. And now, back to the Whistler. Well, Helen, all you can do is stand there in the stateroom and stare at him. The effrontery of this stranger trying to pass himself off as your brother leaves you at a loss for something to say. He doesn't remotely resemble Ted. He's tall with a clean-cut athletic look to him. Ted was short and stocky. Perhaps he thinks it's funny, Helen. Perhaps he's one of those people with a perverted sense of humor, a practical joker. Yeah, it's hilarious, isn't it? to pull a trick like this after six years of almost unbearable suspense. Well, darling, have we better get a move on? Are you stupid enough to think you can get away with this? Uh, get away with what? If this is some crude attempt at humor. Not at all. I'm quite serious. Where's my brother? Now, look, do you have to be that way? I explain why. Don't lie to me. Where is he? Uh, excuse me a moment. Oh, Stuart. Yes, Mr. Van Orton? Would you take care of my hand baggage, please? Yes, sir, right away. Thanks. Come on, Helen, let's go down to the dock. I'll call the purser. I'll have Wait you... Wait a minute. Now, look. Here's the passport with fingerprints and photograph. Birth certificate, State Department credentials. Letters from you. They're forgeries. I'm sorry. They're genuine. You, you're not going home with me. I won't stand for it. Very well, darling. I'll check in at a hotel for the time being. But after all, you can't keep a guy out of his own home now, can you? George, I've never been so stunned in my life. He just stood there, smiling at me, saying over and over that he was Ted. You say he had identification, huh? Oh, everything, everything, even letters from me. I wrote them when Ted first arrived in Manila. Genuine? I think so. Well, they must be. He'd know better than to try to get by with forgeries. Helen, you're sure you're right. George, you don't think I know my own brother? Well, it's been six years. He's probably been in a prison camp make a lot of difference in a man's appearance. But Ted's dead. Huh? Or he would have written. Something terrible's happened, I'm sure of it. This man might have killed him. Yes, that's it. So he could get his hand on Ted's half of the estate. Oh, that's a pretty serious charge, Helen. Have to be sure of yourself. Remember, you're the only one in Seattle who can recognize him now. 
He left here over 15 years ago. Uh, do you have any pictures? No, I thought of that. No, no, there aren't any. Not since he was a little boy. He spent most of his time in the East with Aunt Ida. Oh? Where is she? She died some time ago. Well, there are a lot of ways we can check on him. State Department ought to know about him. He's been with them for over 10 years. Uh, you say he's stopping at a hotel? Yes. You know, of course, Helen, that if he can prove his identity, he has a legal right to live here in this house. I tell you, he's a flagrant imposter. He's not coming here. If I have to hire someone to throw him out. Mm. Who is it? It's Rhoda, Miss. What time is it? After eight. Oh, go away. I'm sleepy. I must see you, Miss. All right, Rhoda. Come in. What is it? It's... It's Mr. Van Norton. What? Where is he? He's in the bathroom, miss. Shaving. Ah, sweet mystery. Oh, of all the unmitigated. Just wait. You. The nerve of him. Oh, I know. Well, good morning, good morning. What do you think you're doing? Hmm? Shaving. <laughs> morning ablutions. I, I can't say I'm used to having ladies barge into the bathroom when I... Get out of here! Uh, 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 uh. Temper, temper. How did you get in? Well, I couldn't get a room at a hotel, so... I took a taxi up last night, walked in the back door. It was open, you see. Well, you can leave the same way you came in. Uh, no, no, I'm here to stay, sister dear. I've got the proof in my pocket. And if you want to get me out, you can trot right down to the Hall of Justice and get yourself a court order. More coffee, Helen? No, thanks. Hotcakes, huh? Mr. Whoever you are. Uh, the name is Van Norton. Theodore Van Norton. I must say, I've never seen such colossal nerve in my life. You flatter me. You're not at all concerned about the servants. Why, should I be? Aren't you afraid they'll recognize you? Oh, don't be silly. None of them were here when I left home. Fifteen years ago, Edward the butler was the last to go, I think. When was it? Thirty-eight, that was it, wasn't it? Oh, by the way, Helen, whatever became of old Edward... There are other people in town, you know. What about your teachers at Washington Heights School? Why, Helen, you know, I believe you're trying to trick me. <laughs> you know, Father sent me to Fox Hall Academy when I was 14. I never went to Washington Heights. Where are you going? You seem to know everything. Why don't you tell me that? Uh, Helen, we have some talking to do, darling, about the will. Father's estate, you know. Seems to me the executor owes me close to a million dollars. You knew it was coming, didn't you, Helen? That's the purpose behind the whole crazy business. It's still inconceivable to you that the man can actually expect to get away with it. And George was right. There are a thousand ways you can check up on him. And the imposter himself just gave you an excellent one. You make a long-distance call to the Fox Hall Academy and talk to Mr. Rigby, the headmaster. Why, well, yes, of course, Miss Van Norton. I'd be delighted to come down tomorrow afternoon. Ted was always one of my favorites, you know. Any special time? What about two o'clock? Fine, fine. It'll be quite a reunion, won't it? Yes, indeed, Mr. Rigby. Quite a reunion. <laughs> Mr. Rigby, this is George Chadwick, my lawyer. How do you do? Hi. Would you like to wait in the living room, Mr. Rigby? I think Ted is out on the tennis court. We'll call him. Thank you. Come on, George. Excuse us, Mr. Rigby. Of course. Do you still think I don't know my own brother? I never said that, Helen. I only said six years can make a lot of a difference. Oh, I'm afraid Mr. What's-His-Name is going to suffer a little embarrassment. You think Rigby will recognize him? Of course. He'll recognize him as an imposter. He knows Ted as well as I do. Hmm. What's the matter? I don't know. I checked those documents of his this morning and... Will you stop talking nonsense, George? I tell you, they're stolen. Heaven knows what happened to Ted or how this 
crook got a hold of his paper. All right, Ellen, all right. You better go and call him. Hello, sis. What's up? I was sorry to interrupt your tennis game. Ted. Oh, oh, it's Ted now, huh? Why, of course. It could have been mistaken, you know. Well, I can't say I expected this. I'd be a little foolish not to admit it when I'm wrong, wouldn't I? Come on, dear. Uh, where to? Just to the living room. You can go back to your tennis in a moment. Oh, there you are, George. Hello, Ted. Uh, hello, George. What's going on around here? We're going into the living room, George. Perhaps you'd like to join us. Oh, of course. Well, open the door, George. Huh? Oh, sorry. Hey, what is all this? I don't... Rigby! Ted! Teddy, old boy, how have you been? What, you old son of a gun? <laughs> hey, what, what, what is this, Helen, a surprise? Why don't you tip a guy off when his old headmaster comes to see him? Oh, you're looking fine, Teddy. Yeah? Good Lord, it's been 15 years. Oh, sure. <laughs> Last time I saw you was after the Washburn game, remember? Yeah, yeah, that was it at Spokane. Yes. Stinky was there, too. Oh, yes. Say, do you remember when the bus broke down that night outside of Wenatchee? And you and I had a hit. You stand there stunned. Speechless, just staring at them as they slap each other on the back, forgetting all about you. And George avoids looking at you. He's on their side now, you're sure of it. And worst of all, it's beginning to get you, too. He's not your brother, you know it, you're positive. It's ridiculous to go through all this rigmarole, but it seems to be your word against his proof, doesn't it? But there are still other ways, aren't there? Like another long-distance call... This time to the State Department in Washington, D.C. After being transferred to four or five different offices, you finally get through to the right man. That you check this matter thoroughly. I'm positive that the man representing himself as my brother is an imposter. You say you were with Mr. Van Norton when he filed his original application here in 1936? Yes, I saw him attach his photograph and fix his fingerprints. I simply want to see that application. I'll forward the file to a Seattle representative and you can check it there. That'd be satisfactory? Quite satisfactory. Thank you. Hmm, I see. You say the file was forwarded here from Washington. That's right. I simply want to examine it, particularly the photograph. Mm-hmm. Excuse me a moment, Miss Van Norton. I'll have to look it up. Well, George? Well, what? I can't say I'm pleased with your lack of confidence in me. Well, who said anything about that? Oh, it's quite clear enough. Helen, I'm a lawyer. I'll believe black is white if they throw enough evidence at me. Mr. Rigby was a very convincing witness. He's a decrepit old fool, and it had been 15 years. I thought he was an intelligent man. I could have passed you off as my brother. He'd forgotten what Ted looks like. And does that explain why Ted recognized him? Oh. I don't know, Helen. Seems to me you're arguing against yourself when you say Rigby might have forgotten what he looks like. What do you mean? Oh. You might have forgotten yourself. After all, it's been six years, you know. A man can change. Don't be ridiculous. I know my own brother as well as I know the... Shh. Here comes the clerk. Here we are. Theodore H. Van Norton. Now, what did you wish to see? Oh, let me see it. Medical examination, education record, application. Where's the picture? On the other side. Oh, here. Satisfied, Helen? It, it can't be. I saw Ted paste his picture on myself. Something wrong? Of course there's something wrong. This isn't my brother. It's that man. Helen, get a hold of yourself. What? Let me see. Yes, here they are. Fingerprints. Listen. Listen, clerk. I want this whole record sent to the office of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Helen, you need a rest. Things getting you. That's one thing. They can't be forged, don't you see? They can't forge his fingerprints. I'm sorry, Miss Van Norton, but I have no authority. You've got to. I tell you, there's a stranger in my house posing as my brother. There's a million dollars involved. Just a minute, Helen. Now, it's most important, Mr. Robbins, not only because of the money involved. You see, Miss Van Norton is extremely upset. Of course, Mr. Chadwick. But you see, I can't simply turn over material like this. I'll make anyone. the necessary arrangements with the FBI, Mr. Robbins, and get authority from Washington. Would that be satisfactory? Quite, Mr. Chadwick. Quite. Hello, Ted. Oh, hello, Helen. I began to wonder where you were all afternoon. Oh, downtown shopping. Oh, the stores are frightful these days. Yeah, indeed they are. Reading? Yeah. 
How's Dick Tracy? I don't know. I haven't checked him today. <laughs> Funny. You used to read Dick Tracy before you even looked at the headlines. I, I guess a guy gets a little serious after six years overseas. In a prison camp most of the time. Yes. I suppose so. Hey, you're looking calmer today. You finally decide I'm kosher? I... I want you to forgive me, Ted. It's... It's so unbelievable that I don't quite trust my senses anymore. Sure. Sure, you're a good kid, Helen. I don't blame you. Will you drink on it? Why not? What'll it be? Bourbon and soda? Oh, you're a man after my own heart. You know, I'm kind of surprised. I thought you'd be a tougher nut to crack. Oh, you expected me to be suspicious. Well, after that episode on the boat, I expected anything. Oh. Here you are. Thanks. What do we drink to? To us, of course. All right. To us. Yes, ma'am. You're in charge of the fingerprinting department here? Yes. I'm Helen Van Norton. I brought in a highball glass yesterday afternoon with some fingerprints on it. Oh, yes. That's the one you wanted us to check against the prints in the State Department application file. Uh, where did you get that glass? A man is posing as my brother, staying at my house. They're his fingerprints. You're sure of the prints on the application? What do you mean? Are you sure they're the bona fide prints of your brother? Of course. I was with him in Washington when he completed the application. I saw him put the prints on it. I see. Well, that ought to settle it for you once and for all. What do you mean? The man at your house is your brother, Miss Van Norton. The prints are identical. I... Can't be. It can't... We wouldn't commit ourselves if we weren't positive. I... I see. Yes, of course. Thank you. Well, Helen, that settles it, doesn't it? You're beaten and you know it. But you still have one more out, just one. It's a desperate chance, but you've decided you have to take it. To determine once and for all whether or not this man is your brother. Whether you can trust your own mind. It's very late that night when you get quietly out of bed and walk downstairs to the telephone. The house is as quiet as a tomb. Everyone's asleep. I want to call Honolulu operator, Mr. Amato Subishi, 28 Kalua Drive, Honolulu. Will you wait? Yes, I'll wait. your party. Go ahead, please. Hello. Hello. Is this Mr. Subishi? Who is calling, please? I last talked to you in April 1941. The name I gave you was Grayson. Do you remember that? Why are you calling? Do you remember me? Of course I remember you. I sent you $50,000 to... To take care of Mr. Van Norton. Uh, he was in Manila. You did take care of him. He's dead. He was killed in an accident in May of 1941. You're positive. Positive. Thank you, Mr. Subishi. Thank you very much. The Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending to tonight's story. Hear that? If you're a driver, that's a signal you should know. The trainman's warning signal that engineers start to blow a quarter mile before a crossing. And another signal it'll pay you to recognize is the big circle sign with yellow letters on a black background spelling out the word signal gasoline. The sign that identifies friendly dealer-owned signal service stations from Canada to Mexico. Wherever you see that sign, there you'll find not only top quality signal products, but also more thorough, more conscientious service because your signal dealer being in business for himself naturally has more incentive to do those little extra things that will keep your car and you happy. Well, add it up, that's just about today's best recipe for longer car life. 
No wonder Signal Oil Company has grown so from a mere handful of stations in Southern California to an organization now serving seven western states from Canada to Mexico. And no wonder more and more wise drivers are letting Signal's yellow and black circle sign be their signal for the surer protection cars need today to help them run better and last longer. And now back to the Whistler. It was a relief to know, wasn't it, Helen? You can trust your own senses now. Ted is dead, and the stranger in the house is an imposter. Somehow, some way, you can prove it. And the $50,000 you paid Mr. Subishi back in the spring of 1941 is still a good investment. Because Ted's million dollars, half of the estate will be yours. All of it. You don't want to think about it anymore. It's been too bewildering. All you want now is your bed and the first good night's sleep in a week. You put down the phone and start toward the stairs. Sit down, Helen. How long have you been here? Long enough. I said sit down. I'm going upstairs. Sit down before you fall down. That's better. You just hung yourself, baby. There's a record of that phone conversation down at FBI headquarters. What are you talking about? You didn't have Honolulu, just in case you're wondering. You were talking to the boys down at the office. We had everything, you see, except the link you just gave us. We knew Subishi paid $40,000 to one of his boys in Manila. The guy who killed your brother. But we didn't know who hired Subishi. What made you suspect me? I didn't at first. I knew Ted had a sister. I knew there were a couple of million bucks in it somewhere. And I had three and a half years in a prison camp to think it over. A guy can do a lot of deductive thinking in three and a half years. So, you looked up Subishi? Yeah. He was dead. Knocked over by a truck the morning of Pearl Harbor. No, we had nothing but suspicion. It's tough, isn't it, huh? You could have been a nice kid if you weren't a killer at heart. Yeah, it took us a long time to work it out. A lot of planning, a lot of names, a lot of people to run down. But when we got going, we knew you'd crack sooner or later. Who are you? Your brother's best friend. And, and you did it because you were his friend? Partly. Partly? Yeah. My name is McKay, FBI. And incidentally, this time I'm telling you the truth. Next Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. Featured in tonight's program were Virginia Gregg and Gerald Moore. This program produced by George W. Allen with tonight's story by Harold Swanton and Mark Smith, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. This is Marvin Miller speaking, reminding you to look for those familiar yellow and black circle signs that identify those popular Signal Oil stations throughout the West from Canada to Mexico. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>